Hello! In this video I'll quickly show you how to set up and use Rotoforge 1.1.0. Rotoforge is now an extension, no longer an add-on, that means it only works with Blender 4.2 and upwards. I'm currently using the latest release, Blender 4.3.2, the LTS version. First install. Go to Edit and Preferences. If you have an old version of Rotoforge installed, you can uninstall it under the Extensions tab with the small button on the right of the extension. After that, go into the Add-ons tab and install the add-on, which you can either get from my Ko-Fi or GitHub via the button on the top right or by drag and dropping the zip file into Blender. Now, in the small menu under the add-on, select a folder in which Rotoforge will be able to save its dependencies. If you have had Rotoforge installed before, you don't have to do anything else. If this is your first time, however, you will have to first press the Check Dependencies button and after that run the install. It is recommended that for this you run Blender with the System Console on. In Windows that is pretty easy, just by going into the Window tab on the top left and toggling the console. However, on other operating systems, such as Linux, you will have to run Blender from a terminal, which will then become your console. After that, it is recommended that you restart Blender. Now let's go over how to use the add-on. Switch it up to the Image Editor, Masking tab, and create a new mask. I'm going to be working on a small footage of Monkey, and I can just drop it right in. If you go into the Rotoforge tab, that should now be on the sidebar, you can now create and edit the different mask layers. I'm going to name this one Monkey, because that's what will cut out. You can rearrange, delete and create new masks as usual, as well as change the different blending modes of the mask layers. Feathering is of course as well supported. Now let's make this layer a Rotoforge layer. That way you can use the AI features of Rotoforge to cut out the subject for you. In this case I'm just gonna make a rough mask around my subject. However, you can also use open splines, where each point is now either set as to being on your subject or of your subject. You can set that in the Rotoforge panel as well. Now let's go over the different options. There are four different types of models which you can use. Light, base, large and huge. The base model is not so great. I recommend using the large model and if that is too computationally intensive, the light model. The huge model is only helpful for complex scenes such as a tennis racket. Now if you used a closed spline like me, you can use the guide strength to tell the model how closely it should be to the spline. In this case 10 works fine for me. I'm gonna use a feathering of 5 pixels for a smooth fall off in the fur of the monkey. Now. We will use the automatic tracking feature of Rotoforge as our subject is fairly stationary in the frame where it works the best. We'll also leave the search radius at its default value. I don't recommend playing with it. Now let's refresh the frames so we can actually see the image sequence and start creating a mask. First let's set the range of the mask. I'm gonna choose the portion of the video that I like in this timeline and then use the provided operator to sync the mask range with the scene range. After that, let's start tracking. While the mask is being generated, the viewport is not as responsive as usual. This is because Blender cannot compute the mask and the UI at the same time, so the UI will be a bit slower. However, you can pause the generation at any time with the escape button and resume it with the tracking operator. Once the generation is done, we can check the result with the overlay. You can choose the color, the strength of the overlay and how dark the background should be. That way you can assess the quality of the masks very easily. Once you are happy with your whole mask, you can bake it into one texture with the button at the top of the menu. To load your mask, open the end panel in the node editor, go into the Rotoforge tab, select your mask and import it using the import mask button. This works in the compositor, the shader and even the geometry nodes tree. And that's it. Now you can create literally anything. Have fun.